in Libya, and the people who want Gaddafi out of the way want him out of the way to gain control of the oil field. So, Sister McKinney, we champion you. We love the idea that you would go in the eye of danger and you would bring back the film that you brought back explaining to the American people that you are ill-informed that the controlled media has given you a picture that is a distorted picture, and you are backing the bombing of an independent African country and trying to kill a leader who has championed the liberation cause across Africa. So Minister Farrakhan did a uh, press conference at the UN, and that press conference did not reach the press because of the facts that he brought up. We need to get a, a copy of it. You can see Minister Sharif, it's available here in Atlanta, so you can get the full picture of what's happening in this African country. Thank you, Cynthia McKinney, and those who can make it with her on the next trip. And that's a part of our next tour, is to raise funds so that we can take eyewitnesses to see what is happening in Libya, uh, to see the death and destruction, and how the one-sided picture that we're receiving from the press is a total distortion of the facts. Thank you very much. Long live Libya! Long live Gaddafi! Long live Africa! We will now hear from people who participated in the Dignity Delegation and witnessed firsthand the bombing, the NATO bombing, of the people of Libya. Yes, I had the privilege of being in uh, Libya the first part of June. I was there on June the 7th, 2011, when NATO carpet bombed the city of Tripoli, a city of about 2.5 million people. And you could count the bombs. There's no mistake that there was over 80 bombs and missiles fired. There's no mistake they were fired in, on civilian targets and on civilians. And I was able to visit casualties in the local hospital. Now, this was a futile attempt by Britain, France, the United States, and the other NATO countries to jumpstart revolution. They actually thought they were going to jumpstart a revolution. There was not a revolution going on over there. Right. They thought they would instigate one. And I can tell you personally that the people of Libya seem to be very happy with their government. They are proud people, they are strong people, and they are an educated people. I don't believe I met one woman who could not speak three languages. Is that work? Three languages. English, French, and Arabic. The young school children could speak uh, English, Arabic, and some French. They are prosperous people. It's not a poor country. The wealth has been shared with the people. They have chosen the socialist model. That model seems to be working for them. Every day I walked among the people, talked with them. They supported their government. They are very upset at Obama, very disappointed in Obama that they would be trying to start a revolution over there, trying to kill people. But again, I was very impressed with the people, and again, I cannot emphasize enough, I was able to walk among them. They are a free people. It is a free country. I was able to walk and talk every day among the people there. And again, they are happy with their government, and, uh, and they're not uh, instigating or hoping for a revolution. My name is Mike Rathoff. I'm a local attorney in Atlanta. Thank but I was able to go on this uh, uh, fact finding tour. We were there about eight days in Tripoli and in other parts of Libya, too. My name is Christy Greger Brad, and I'm a mother, a grandmother, and a great grandmother. And I'm honored to have been a part of the Dignity Delegation, thanks to Honorable Cynthia McKinney. What I saw in Libya. The most shocking thing that I saw was a 30-foot crater in the family room of Brother Leader's son's home. A 30-foot crater in the family room caused by a bomb. That bomb murdered his son 
three grandchildren, and of course, the collateral damage, we will probably never know. But I can tell you that the homes around the compound were destroyed also. But there were no civilian casualties, according to CNN and, and the uh, American media. We were able to speak to something that you probably saw. If you watch Al Jazeera television, you saw a black man being beheaded by uh, the so-called rebels because they said he was a mercenary. We went to this gentleman's home and spoke to his family, his brother, who took a cell phone call from his brother's cell phone with someone saying, we're going to kill him, you can watch it on television. Humanitarian intervention. We saw people going about their daily work just as uh, the people were going about their daily business today until someone called Marta and asked them to drill us out. Uh, the only thing that they were worried about is whether or not the bomb would be dropped on them. We saw clouds of white smoke reaching into the sky after hearing a bomb at 3 minutes to 11 o'clock in the morning. If you've been to movies and you've seen war activity, you've seen that white cloud that billows high and wide and then turns black. I saw that with my own eyes. When I came back to Georgia, coming through customs, and the custom, a customs uh, uh, officer said to me, you've been to Libya? And I said, yes. He said, well, I'm glad you're home safely. Weren't they bombing over there? I said, every day. He said, and weren't you afraid? And I said, no. What was there to be afraid of? And he said, one of those guys might hit the wrong button. I pray that one of those guys don't hit the wrong button and NATO bomb is directed towards us. We are not free unless the world is free. Yeah. We are not free until the world is safe. <laughs> and the people in Libya are not safe from U.S. NATO hostility. All right, all right. I was pleased to lead the Dignity Delegation that was able to provide an eyewitness report to the people of this country and to the people, peace-loving people of the world. But I have to begin by saying shame on ja John Lewis. Shame, John Lewis. Shame on John Lewis for putting the finance war against African people. Shame. At a time when the American people have been asked to tighten their belt, teachers are receiving tin slips. The vital statistics of the American people reveal a health care crisis in the making and the U.S. government is in serious threat of default, our president and Congress have decided that a new war, this time against the people of Libya, is appropriate. This comes at a time when the U.S., by one estimate, spends approximately $3 billion per week for war against Iraq and Afghanistan. The president and Congress continue to fund the war against Libya, despite the fact that Secretary of Defense Robert Gates announced that the U.S. had no strategic interest in Libya, and despite the fact that the Senate Chairwoman of the Select Committee on Intelligence admits that the U.S. really does not know who the rebels are, while the rebels themselves, according to a Telegraph report of March 25th, admit that al-Qaeda elements are among their ranks. So while the apparatus of our government has been used for over 10 years to inform the American people and the global community that al-Qaeda is an enemy of freedom-loving people all over the world, our president chooses to ally our military with none other than al-Qaeda elements in Libya and other people whom U.S. intelligence say they do not know. Additionally, U.S. Admiral Locklear admitted to a member of Congress that one of NATO's missions 
was to assassinate Muammar Gaddafi. And indeed, NATO bombs have killed Gaddafi's son and three grandchildren, just as U.S. bombs in 1986 killed his daughter. NATO bombs just recently killed the grandchildren of one of Gaddafi's associates in a targeted assassination attempt. Targeted assassination is not within the scope of the United Nations resolution. And targeted assassination is against U.S. law, international law, international humanitarian law, and international law. Targeted assassination is also a crime. We certainly cannot encourage others to abide by the law when we so openly break it. While in Libya, I witnessed NATO's targeting of civilians. Bombs and missiles landed in residential neighborhoods, hit schools, exploded near hospitals, destroyed parts of the public broadcasting infrastructure, and narrowly missed killing students at al Fatah University. When civilians are targeted in war, or low kinetic activity, crimes are committed. NATO practices in Libya are exactly like Israel's practices in Gaza. That's right. Fishermen yeah. are killed as they go about their fishing business. A naval blockade allows arms to flow to NATO's Libyan allies, but stops food, fuel, and medicine from entering non-NATO ally-held areas. The entire population suffers as a result. Selective punishment is illegal when Israel practices it, and it is also illegal when NATO practices it. NATO and the hyperbolic press account have introduced a kind of race hatred that the Libyan people have been trying hard to erase. Approximately 50% of Libya looks like me. Innocent, darker-skinned Libyans have been targeted, tortured, harassed, and killed. The people of Libya have, have the right to self-determination. They have the right to resource nationalism. They have the right to live in peace. They have the right to determine their future. And they need not exercise their rights underneath the shock and awe of NATO bombs and missiles. Yep, Thank you. NATO. Yes, the NATO. Yes, the NATO. Long live Libya. Long live Gaddafi. Yes, the NATO. Long live the NATO. Okay, uh, I guess, uh, do, we, do we have anybody from the press or anybody that has any questions? Does anybody want to ask any questions? we got about five minutes. Well, I have a question. I have a statement and a question. My question is right about the third week of January, way before Americans get to know about Libya and the so-called uprising in the Middle East. The United, Na United States sent its war bombers across the Mediterranean for a quote-unquote a special operation. This is right between the 15th and the 16th of January of this year. And we know the uprising in Tunisia started about February 7th. That was way before anything called uprising started in the middle and so-called North Africa. So what did the United States have in mind, and NATO have in mind, to send its bombers for that special operation? And what, what was that special operation, if it is not what they are doing in Libya? So we are saying, well, it's a question, but we are anybody you know, who, who can answer. We are saying that the U.S. and its NATO allies really instigated the so-called uprising in Libya. Of course, they are financing it and supporting it. And so if that is not the case, we want answers as to why they sent its um, war bombers, as, I mean, bombers to the Mediterranean for that special operation. Adam, Sh uh, Adam Shapiro, WRFP. My question is a very brief one. Cynthia, you said that uh, the Congressional Black Caucus and others, I guess, are not informed, I have trouble understanding how that, uh, how can that possibly, how, I'm not saying it is true, but can you explain that? How can that be? Actually, I did, I was not the one to say that the members of the Congressional Black Caucus, I was not the one to say that members of the Congressional Black Caucus are uninformed. 
I think members of the Congressional Black Caucus know fully well what war is. And when they vote to fund war, they are voting to kill people. NATO is targeting civilians. NATO is killing people who look like me. NATO is killing people who look like John Lewis. And why in the world with the conscience of the Congress vote to fund war is beyond me. I think the people of the city of Atlanta, the constituents of the 5th Congressional District, deserve to have an answer to that question. When teachers are being given pink slips, when people are being denied health care, when young people are being denied a decent education, uh, their Congress and our Congress representative right here in the 5th Congressional District can find money to vote for war. Uh, I'm Patricia Craig with People TV. It's 50. I would like to know mass media is not educating our, our viewers. They're not telling the truth. We want to thank you for telling the truth. And is there any other way that we can find and keep up with you and keep the truth going to our community? Uh, one thing, uh, this current edition of the Final Call, okay. it's the only national black newspaper in America. And uh, we have covered uh, this very closely. There will be a massive rally in New York on August the 13th in Harlem on Malcolm X Boulevard from 110th Street to 125th Street. We expect 500,000 people to say no to Barack Obama, no to the bombing of an African nation. And I just want to say, uh, Cynthia McKinney, and we have to pull this out, there was a book called The Tragedy of LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, uh, because of his involvement in the war in Vietnam. We're going to have to put together a book called The Tragedy of Barack Obama, the first black president. And uh, he, from his father coming from Africa, and he would go along with the game to bomb an African nation in order to gain the oil fields and to kill its leader, which is unacceptable to blacks not only in America but throughout the world. Another Mobutu. All right, we got our, we're going to let our New Black Panthers uh, representative uh, speak for, for he, he, he just arrived. So I, I just want to, first of all, once again, let America know that the only Congress person we had since Adam Clayton Powell is since the yeah. beginning. She's been standing where she's supposed to stand at the right time. I'm just tired of these hypocrites in America and this chariot of Obama going along with these hypocrites when he's from Kenya and got mild, mild blood. He know who we're supposed to be warring with, and he know who the enemy is. And I'm so sick of this trickery that they use, acting like the African kings and the African leaders getting so old that there needs to be a change of hand when they know America is not ran by Obama and no president of the United States ran by old white senators who been in office for 80 years, like Strong Thurman, whatever his name, that just died, he should have died earlier. And they sit there and they run this country for 80 and 90 years, but they want to force Africa to switch hands when they want to. This is a conspiracy to confuse our young people yes. who are now beginning to organize, and Obama had a wonderful opportunity to use these young people. And he went back then worse than Bush, Bush, Clinton, and all the rest of them. And Obama, you need to move out of that crowd Maybe the White House is intimidated. Maybe you need to move to a black house for a minute and get back black because you're scared of being black. If you're scared of being black, you're scared of being alive in the world because black people are the foundation and the civilization started where you're from. And I tell Obama to bag your ass out of Libya, stop bombing black people, look in the mirror, and stop making your wife run around the country in Africa at a time when you've got to bomb where she's at, man. It's you being a hypocrite to the world in yourself into your foot and your head and stop trying to please people ain't been able to be pleased nowhere on the face of the earth since we've been here. And I want you to read the destruction of the African civilization by Channel and Williams, and you're doing the same thing that the Europeans have done in that book with a black face. My father. I'm pleased to say that John Lewis has agreed to meet with us, and I think we need to go up there. Yeah. and express ourselves to our congressional representatives. Yeah. Thank you. WATP, the place to be we are created in. You have just heard a live report from downtown Atlanta, where Cynthia McKinney and others have spoke about the atrocities on Libya. Stay tuned for the best and the rest of your life as we will bring you the details, and the facts.
as they come available. 